Tonight we are in a new psalm. So let's go to Psalm 138. Okay, in our psalm series, uh, which we started in 2012. It's amazing how long we've been in this thing. And we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Psalm 138, verse 1. A psalm of David. I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods. Interesting, lowercase g. Will I sing praise unto thee? Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for going through the scriptures verse by verse. And I, I know there's different ways to, to preach and teach. And uh, we can preach topical. And basically, you know, I guess what I did this morning. But for the most part, uh, I believe scripturally, um, preaching expository, I can't even say the word now, expositorily, that's the word, uh, is really putting you in the driver's seat, Lord, because you decide what we're going to hear, not us. And uh, we can pick and choose what scriptures we want to hear and preach because it's what we want to hear, or we can just follow you through verse by verse and listen to what you want us to hear. And there's a big difference between the two. And uh, I'm not saying one is completely wrong, Lord, but I know we can't go wrong with just preaching the word verse by verse. And because we'll fall on the stuff that we like, and maybe we'll fall on stuff that we don't like. But all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable. So bless this scripture tonight. Give the winds a mighty voice. Take it to the four corners of the galaxies and beyond. And if not there, take it to those who are listening online. And if not there, take it to those who are here, and if not there, certainly take it into my heart. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So uh, this is going to be part one of Psalm 138, and our title is, I Will or I Won't. And this is going to be its that simple series, and because we're going to see this theme through Psalm 138. So let's, let's read Psalm 138, and we're going to just focus on verses 1 and 2 right now. So again, verse 1, a psalm of David, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing unto thee. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Important there. For thou has magnified thy word above all thy name. Very interesting, and we can go really, with just these two scriptures here, we can get really deep in theology here. But for tonight, what I want to do is really focus on two things that jumped out at me. Uh, a, a, a move of volition by David. Verse 1 and verse 2 start off with the same thing. I will. That's a choice. And it's a question that we have to ask ourselves every day. Will you or won't you? And we notice that this positive affirmation of David is he is determined, he is stating, I have decided. Like there's an old song, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to do this. I've crossed over from thinking, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. No, I am. I will. I will. I will do these things that I am saying. But notice what it's not stating. As it's not asking not whether or not you will or will not be religious, not whether or not you will or not will not be good, or whether you will give or not give, or serve or not serve. No, none of those things are really at the focal point if this part isn't the foundation that they are built on, i.e. to promise to praise and worship God out loud in public serving Him. Because you can do the other stuff, but it doesn't mean anything. Especially verse 1, I will praise thee with my whole heart 
before the gods, and the word gods there, lowercase g, you know how I love studying, you know, uppercase g, lowercase od, low, uppercase lord, uppercase l-o-r-d, uppercase l, lowercase o, and they all have significance, and here is governorship, gods in the spiritual sense, not that there are other gods, there aren't any other gods, but there are people in power uh, who are controllers of things. There are those in the spiritual realm, demonic forces, uh, that we could liken them to, but not the creator. There are gods, and we did a whole thing on this, uh, but not God in the sense of creator God. There are definitely beings, as uh, Ephesians 6.12 talks about, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay, spiritual authorities. Those are the type of things. So David is declaring here, before man and before even those in the spirit world, okay, I declare what I am going to do. And it's important that we make this declaration because you can't have one without the other. Because people build their lives on a religion or a philosophy or whatever it is, but if the foundation isn't sure, if what you build everything up here on isn't sure, then it all comes crumbling down. And I'm going to use a silly analogy. I always use mechanical analogies here uh, to make something, you know, vast uh, and infinite, a little bit more finite for our minds here. Let's say you buy a brand new car, okay? You buy a brand new car, you're very excited that you bought a brand new car, you're trusting in that brand new car, but what if the tires are old tires, right? You got a brand new car, brand new engine, brand new everything. What good does the new car do if the tires are, are not well, are not good? You know, it, it breaks everything down to the, com, you know, the, the, the foundation. If you're not rolling on good ties in the race world, last night I started the ministry of, I think, I don't know how many years it's been there, uh, a lot of years, and uh, at the racetrack where I work as the chaplain out there, and tires are very important to the racers. They're everything. Engines, I tell you, without, you know, race car drivers live and die by tires. Uh, and if anything's going to go on the racetrack, it is the tires. They're very concerned about the air pressure. They warm them up. They have to be a certain temperature. And people have like heaters on them. It just has to be, they can't be dirt on them. And if you've ever seen some of the guys go out, and girls who go out on the racetrack, when they go out before the race starts, they go like this, serpentine, back and forth. And I, when I first started going to the track, I said, what do they do that for? Number one, to clean off any sand on their tires but also to get the tires warmer. They heat the tires up so they stick to the ground. And if you don't have tires that are going to stick to the ground, you have a, it doesn't matter how big your engine is, how much money you have invested in the car, it comes down to the tires. And I'm a tire guy. I'm a tire nut. And the last couple of weeks, I've been uh, helping a, a family in church buying uh, actually a couple, well, one car and helping them with another vehicle. But they both had tire issues in common. Tires, it was, it was interesting, tires that look good, and it's the strange thing about tires, they can look brand new. Matter of fact, they can be brand new tires in the, in the form or in the realm that they've never been used on the road, but they can be no good. If they've sat, because you want you don't want stale tires. You can take a brand new tire, brand new, and this was the case on somebody's uh, truck that I was helping them with. The tires were like brand new, but they sat for like I don't know, 15 years, so they get dry rotted, and they're just, they're deceiving. Because you look, wow, the treads are good. Has the little kitty things that stick up, like you know, when they're brand new tires, they gotta be new. But if you look in between the treads, okay, you see dry rot, cracks. And what happened, not one tire, 
blew out, but two tires blew out. And poor young person broke down, and I went to help him change the tires. Well, let's get your spare. You got a good spare? Yeah, I guess I just got it from a guy. A buddy, you spare, it's in great shape. So I pulled the spare down. Obviously, there's no air in the spare tire. So I said, this is a good spare. Goes, I don't know. The guy said, this is a good spare. Looked like a brand new tire, again. So I brought it to the house, filled it up with air, held air. But I said, let's, let's drive back. I won't be, before you drive home, I'm going to look at this tire. And you know what? It was a brand new tire, and it was all dry rotted and cracked. And when you put air in it, you know, I was putting air in it going, Man, <laughs> this, this tire is going to pop on me. But two tires popped on this vehicle that looked like they were pristine. People, I, I think there's a, there was an old commercial, you know, your tires, whatever, uh, I don't know if it was Goodyear, whatever, you're riding on, you know, their, whatever, their quality. You put your family on those tires. And without those tires, you're in big trouble. And that's basically what it is with, with Jesus Christ. If the foundation is not sure, if you've come to Christ for the wrong reason, which is very popular today, to come to Christ for not what Christ came to do. And I've been saying this, many people are not even believers and they think they are. Many pastors are not believers and they think they are. Because if you didn't come on the foundational truths of the, of the cross, the death, the burial, burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, for what? Not a good life, to pay for our sin debt. So you gotta go, you've got to get that first. There's no, everything else is secondary. It doesn't mean that God can't work in your life. But if you don't come through the right door, it's like driving the brand new car that you spend all that money on with old tires. So when you buy tires, everyone's going to be going out looking at their tires. I have this thing of looking at people's tires. I'll be having a conversation by someone's car. I, was, I spot tires. I said, Gee, those tires jerk. I don't know. I should have been a tire salesman. But let's, let's continue reading. You know, it makes me think about, um, you know, 9-11 when those towers went down. You had these big, massive towers. And isn't it, isn't it funny how they just went straight down like that? It, it like imploded from within. And it made me think about, you know, there wasn't, you know, it doesn't need to be uh, so many other things that are attacking you, just one thing that disintegrates what? The steel girders that melted. The foundation of that building, those buildings, once you take away, because we could have taken away the bricks, the building would have stayed. But you take away the metal and the I-beams and it all comes crumbling down. So, Let's go again, and we're going to keep reading these a couple of times because they just say so much. So again, now we're going to read this again in the King James. A Psalm of David, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Notice these words here. Before the gods will I sing praise unto thee. I will worship towards thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. But well, how many times do we praise God for his truth? Even the inconvenient truth, even the truths that we don't like. Truth, no matter what it says, God, I might not like this. I was talking to somebody the other day, and you talk about, you know, what do you know about the Bible and stuff? And you know, I don't know if I agree with this. Or Somebody was asking me, I think there, somebody in their family didn't agree with this scripture or that scripture. And uh, something to do with animals. Whenever people bring up animals in the Bible, I know it's going to be a problem. And, and I have to tell them, some things that God says, it's not like, it's, we don't have to agree with it. People think, well, if, if I don't agree with it, I'm not believing it. No, that's not how it works. Sometimes God says stuff, I don't know why. But he's the creator of the Adam. I'll put my faith in him. Some things we just don't know. And again, it's, it's not, well, I don't like that, or I don't agree with that, or that doesn't sound right. And I, I know I use this analogy a, a lot. You know, you can tell the police officer who pulls you over, well, I don't like this one bit. 
I don't agree with this stop sign thing. I don't like it. And he's going to say, well, I'm sorry you feel that way, but here's your ticket. It's just the way it is. It's the law. I don't like those camera things. They give me tickets. I don't like them. And I don't think they're right, and I think we should get rid of them. But when I get a ticket, I got to pay it. It's just the way it is. So we don't have to agree with God's law, but we do have to obey it. I want to read um, the two scriptures again, the New Living Translation. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I will bow before your holy temple as I worship. I will give thanks to your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness because your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. Interesting translation there. But what's the point? Well, notice in this psalm and in the selection, notice that to choose to praise God out loud in your life, that's, what it's, that's basically what it's saying. You have to decide, am I going to do that for everyone to see, to give God credit openly for who he is in front of all the world who thinks you're nuts for believing in him, who people who might laugh at you, who might make fun of you. People, there is no doubt that it is hard to be a Christian today. I will say it is harder to be a Christian today than it was yesterday, than it was 20 years ago, than it was 30, 50, 60, 70 years ago. And I got some bad news. It's going to be harder. It's going to be very hard. Just look at what's happening to Jewish people. Okay? Uh, you're going to have to keep your mouth shut if you're Jewish now. In our own nation. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that horrible? It's, it's absolutely horrible. And no one's on your side. No one, but a lot of, most people are not on your side. And trust me, okay, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile, okay, when we come to Christ, we're going to be hated just the same way. And it's going to be hard. So for David to say these things, and you can say, well, David is king of Israel, and he could, you know, or maybe he wasn't at this time. Uh, it's easy to say, well, I'm the king, this is, you know, I'm going to make an acknowledgement. But how many times in the scriptures, you know, like we have like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we have these three young men, where it costs them. We will not deny our God. We will not deny who we follow. Okay, you're going to go, and you're going to go in not a good place. You're going to go in a furnace. You're going to go here. You're going to go, in, it's funny, into the ovens. <laughs> That didn't happen too long ago when people were going into the ovens because of who they, because of the God they followed. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because we have a choice. Because what's the other choice? To keep my faith to myself. How many times have you heard that? People say, you know, why don't you keep your God to yourself? You know, if that's what makes you hate when people say that. When that, I'm so happy that works for you. I'm so happy you found something. Oh, no, what do you think, I joined some club or a gym? No, this is the creator of time and space. He's not just good for me, he's good for you, and you better know him. This is not, you know, if, well, you choose Jesus, I'll follow Buddha, we'll all end up at the, no. So the world is telling us, keep our mouths shut. What does Jesus say? Okay, preach the gospel, and then the end shall come. Jesus is not coming back till that gospel. We've got to preach that gospel. We can choose to keep God to myself. I can choose to keep my beliefs to myself. I can choose to keep my blessings to myself, meaning... When God does great things, well, I don't want to tell everybody it was, I was praying for it and God did it. I just keep it. it was, oh, good luck. I had chance. The cards were in my... And you know what? It really drives me crazy. I hate Christians. Well, I know I hate. I can't hate Christians. But I dislike Christians who use the word karma. Okay? If you're saying, well, karma was with me, see, I slap you in the face there. 
karma was with you. Keep Jesus to myself. Because what are you doing? If you keep God to yourself, you're basically, I'm thanking myself. Right? You know, it's funny, like Thanksgiving, uh, I think people forgot why Thanksgiving in this country was made. It was supposed to be, who are we thanking? God. But now we have a Thanksgiving. I have somebody I know who wants nothing to do with God in their Thanksgiving. Somebody I know, a relative. So I, I'm like perplexed. So who are we actually, who are you actually thanking on Thanksgiving? Ourselves. Right? Because we're not going to thank God, not allowed in that house. So thank, we're going to thank what? The cosmic forces? Thank the government? I mean, Thanksgiving isn't a biblical holiday, but it could be because the Bible says, give thanks unto the Lord. We should be doing it every day. But when we're told to keep it to ourselves, and we decide to keep it to ourselves, and you know what? I think that's what's going to happen to a lot of Christians. I shared with you a couple of, probably a month or two ago, somebody I knew just got saved and uh, their uh, wife is not quite there yet. And with all the stuff that's going on in the news, I, and I was really surprised, person who lives around here said when all this persecution and attacks and stuff, she wasn't going to wear her cross anymore because she was afraid it was going to offend someone and going to be out somewhere, I don't want to be targets. People, when you start to be afraid to say, I am a follower of Christ, uh, that's a problem. That's a problem. But what's our options? You can't choose Christ and roll on old rubber tires. Okay? You can't choose Christ and because... Everything falls apart. And what does the Bible say? Let's, let's get some scriptures here. And as that song was, words in red. It's interesting. The whole Bible should be in red. Because it's all the word of God uh, ordained by him. Matthew 10, 32. Jesus says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men. Isn't it funny? I don't even like this. These scriptures make you feel uncomfortable. Him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. Oh, that's great. I love that. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Which makes me think of Matthew 7.22. Let's go there. And I use this scripture a lot. I, I think this is one of these most chilling scriptures in the Bible. There are many uh, but this is one of them. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 22, many will say to me in that day. Now, how many times the Bible speaks of that day? Most Christians don't even know what God is talking about. In that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out demons and in thy name done many wonderful works? And Jesus says, well, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, you that work iniquity. Meaning, to, to do good things without Jesus Christ as the sole reason why you're doing them is sin. Therefore, whosoever, now look at verse 24, it continues. We usually stop there, but let's continue the narrative here. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, what does Jesus say? And does them. That's the I will person. I will liken unto him a wise man who built his house upon a rock. Good tires. <laughs> okay. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Now, before we go on, you know, it's getting back to the tire analogy, does it matter what tire you drive your car on? Because we can get new tires that are really not that great. Just because they're brand new, they can be inferior because they're cheap. There's only one rock, it's Jesus Christ. 
And you can't build your life on on something that's like Jesus or close to him. It has to be him. Me with tires, and you could ask my wife, I am like insane with tires. I have been known multiple times to buy. Who does this? I buy tires. I look at them. I don't like them. I return tires. I don't like these tires. I put them on the car. I don't like them. I'm bringing them back. I return. People think I'm crazy. She made me do it in North Carolina. I made her do it. She needed a set of tires. She got to the tire place. And I'm like researching the tires. They're not good in the rain. Go back there. I called the guy. I want these tires off. I don't like them. Okay, you went back, put different tire. I want these tires on. Because you know what? My loved one is riding on those tires. <laughs> and I want her to get home safely. I don't want her to have the cheapest tires because they look good. And it's the same thing. We, we, we do that with, with our eternity. And then Jesus continues in verse 26. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine, look at two different groups of people. Both people have heard the words of God, but this person does them not. That's the I won't person. Shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon old tires. No, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came in. We always point this out. Notice it's the same world for the believer and the unbeliever. Rain, snow, we all live, right? The Lord, the sun rises on the evil and the good, right? Both ways. We all live in the same world, but that world will not destroy you. Because the rain descends and the flood came and the winds blew and it beat upon that house. But what happened to this house? And it fell and it didn't just fall. It was total annihilation. Total loss. Yeah, boy, and I tell you, talk about the free will of man. I mean, it's all over the place here. Choosing this, choose yes, choose to follow, choose not to follow. In some ways, the people in Matthew 7, 26 through 27, who built their house on the sand, again, they're like people who think they have something good, but they don't. And again, that's a choice. Jesus is a choice. Walking by faith is a choice. Trusting God is a choice. Obeying God is a choice. Sharing your faith in God is a choice. Meaning that even our blessings are a choice. As we spoke about this morning. So these words, I will or I won't, they're not just little words, as the Bible says, every dot or tittle, or every jot or tittle. Everything, everything in, in the grammatical makeup of the scriptures is there for a reason. They're not just little words. And they carry much on their backs. And even more, check this out. God gives us the choice to say, well, who cares about what I do or don't do in regards to God? God gives us that choice. I'm not going to follow him. You do what you want to do. I'm not going to do it. Isn't that amazing? That's a choice. And you got freedom. But remember this in Matthew 12, 36, more words in red. Jesus says, but I say unto you, every boy, I tell you, these are killer scriptures. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account for in the day of judgment. For by thy words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Wow, it's not saying how many good deeds you did or what religion you believe. It's what you did. Did you say, I believe in Jesus Christ? Those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I said, Oh, it's just words. No, it's not words. It's bigger than that. It's not just words. Matthew 6, 21, more words in red. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Ugh. That's a killer. You know why that's a killer? Because sometimes Jesus Christ, I'm going to say it's a hard thing, isn't always my treasure. I'm being honest with you. Not by choice, but by, I don't know, accident or by flesh. 
How about this? Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil unto you, it's interesting, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, boy, does it look evil to the world to serve God now? You are the bad guys. You serve God, you serve Jesus, you're the problem. I'm not making it up. That's just the way it is now. But Joshua 24, 15 says, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Whether the gods, lowercase g, which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me, look at, boy, choice here. But as for me and my house, we will. The word will is right in there. I will, we will, volition, we will serve the Lord. Interesting, the people replied, and the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. But did they? Yes. Will we? Yes. Now, what I want to do is, I, wanna, I don't want to bring this on a real down point. I want to try to bring this on an up point. Because by now, you might be saying, oh, I really feel horrible because, man, I just, I don't have God as 100% in everything in my life. Sometimes I screw up. Sometimes I make a mistake. Sometimes I'm out of character. Well, I got good news for you. There are going to be times when we say in our hearts, I know I should do the right thing, but I know I won't do the right thing. Did you ever do that? Did you ever say, okay, I know what I should do in this situation. No doubt. I know what it is, but I'm not doing it. I'm going to do on purpose the wrong thing, knowing, but right now I have to deal with it. I don't care. Do you think God has taken that into consideration? Did Paul not say things that I want to do and should do, I don't do, and the things that I shouldn't do, I do freely? Ah! Who shall deliver me from this body of death, right? He understands the struggle. That the Spirit is, is certainly willing. People, don't, all of us, we want to be good. We want to be righteous. We want to please God. The Spirit is willing. But the flesh is weak. Would God ask you, you know, to climb a ladder if you had no legs or arms? He understands that we have limitations, people. And the Spirit is willing. And I know in, in most of our hearts it is. But I also know, personal experience, that yeah, boy, do I know that the flesh is weak. So what do I do with that? How do I live in a world where we tend to say, I won't do what God wants sometimes. Or worse, I won't say what God wants me to say. Or worse than that, I will not share who God is to me because I'm at work, it's a new job, I don't want anybody to laugh at me, I don't want my friends to laugh at me, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Now, this is not to give you an out because you know we don't have freedom to sin, but... I thank God for his grace. Because did not Peter once say, I will not praise God in public. And he went right out and denied. It's one thing, can you, you know, it's one thing keeping your mouth shut at work or at school, or whatever, about your faith. It's another thing for someone to say, hey, I thought I saw you coming out of church. Don't you go to church, that Sunday Bible church. Nope, never that, never saw the place. Do you imagine, right? Boy, Peter took it to a whole new level. Jesus never heard of the guy. Wow. But, did Peter lose his salvation? No. Did Peter feel the wrath of God upon him? No. He felt the loss of disappointing God. And he went out. Boy, do you know that feeling? Sometimes it's the worst of the worst feelings. The grieving of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, well, I should have said something. 
You know those times when you have, oh, what an opportunity, and I kept my mouth shut. Oh, you kick yourself. I can't believe I did that. Praise God for the cross. Praise God that we can fall on his mercy and say, Lord, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. But we take solace in knowing did God still use Peter? Absolutely. He called Peter Satan. He said, get behind me, Satan. Poor Peter. But he still loved Peter. You know where Peter is right now? He's with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. But it all meaning what? That yes, we must choose to be bold with our faith. But when we don't, because I tell you, there are some times we're not. There are some times we go left when we're supposed to go right, and we know it. Sometimes we do it because the flesh is weak. But remember, God's grace is there to lift us back up, dust us off, and say, made a mistake. What do you got to do? Father, in heaven, forgive me. In Jesus' name, 1 John 1, 9. Okay, and what does God say? Now get back up. And go back out, and tomorrow we'll start this all over again. Isn't that great? I do not fear, people, you should, you should fear God, but do not feel the wrath of God because we're not appointed to wrath. He is a loving father who loves his children. A loving father will correct his children. I felt the correction of God, but I've also felt the hugs of God. I felt the grace of God. How many times, you know, there are some times when I've done something, I was kind of have like this flinch thing. I'm like waiting for it, like something, and God says, come over here. No soup for you. No, he doesn't say that. <laughs> he goes, no, we're going to go out and get some ice cream. That's God's grace. I've had those times. I'm like, really, God? I, I know. You confessed it. I get it. I'm not going to. God doesn't always punish and pummel you to the ground. He doesn't want to do that. Would you want to do that to your children? You're disappointed. You're upset that they did that. But do you stop loving them? Okay. See, that's one thing. The world who knows not Christ, they don't understand why Christ is so great on ten different levels. We're Christians not because we think we're better than anyone. No, because we know we're sinners that needed to be saved like everyone else. We're, we're, you know, we forgive others because we've been forgiven. And we're going to need to be forgiven over and over and over again. Is the cross able to not, to not just take care of past sins, but future sins that God have in mind? Have you, ever, you know what? Interesting. Have you ever done something great for the Lord in great ministry and you feel God's blessings? And then like a month later, you do something really bad, like a big, big sin. Do you think God didn't know that you were going to do that sin? A year in advance, he already knew exactly what you were going to do six weeks, two days, and three hours from now. He already knows. He knows when you're going to make him proud. He knows when you're going to disappoint him. But his love for you doesn't change. The unconditional love of God, right? What can separate us from the love of God? Amen for that. So we, we mess up. We confess up and we move on to serve another day. Because tomorrow is a new day, thank God, if he gives it to us tomorrow. And with that new day will be new mercy and new grace. And we're still his children, right? You don't change that relationship. I know Trinity is perfect and she never does anything wrong, but... But I know if sometimes she makes a mistake, I know mom and dad will always love Trinity. Isn't that great? See, they're always going to love you. Right? God never gives us back. Ah, I'm giving you back. You're too much trouble for me. No, we might be trouble for him, but he loves us. And we need to rest in that love. I need to rest in that love. Sometimes I need to understand that too. That even when we deny our Father, His amazing grace will not deny us. 
even when we were dead in trespass and sins, right? Christ loved us. And He's still going to love us. He is the God who loves us so much that we can't deny ourselves out of His love. Okay? I want to pick on Trinity, but I'm going to pick on Trinity tonight. Uh, if Trinity one day said, I don't want to be your daughter anymore, Mom and Dad. And she can say that, and they can say, well, you can say it all you want, but you're our daughter. Can't change it. Can't change it. Hey, I don't want to follow Christ anymore. That's too late. I adopted you. I bought you out of the slave market of sin. I paid for you with my own blood. It's redeemed. I redeemed you. You're my possession. You could deny me all you want. If we deny and he remains faithful, he cannot. We deny God and he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. And those who believe in the loss of eternal security, I don't know how you. I have a, a friend of mine, a good brother, but uh, had big arguments about this. That you know, that you know, every time you sin, you lose your salvation. And I say, how do you live like that? Where's the joy of your salvation? So if you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off and you, you say bad things, bam, you lose your salvation, you get into a car accident, and you die, you go to hell because you slipped up that one time and you didn't confess God back again quick enough. It's a horrible theology. Not because I, I like it that, it, that it's a good thing, but because that's what it is. And I'm glad for that. I want to live. If I had to be, every day I sinned, I would lost my salvation. I would be most miserable. I'm a, I'm, today I'm a, a believer, not a believer. I'm a believer, I'm not a believer. Back and forth. There's so many people who believe that. But you've got a sure foundation. If your foundation is sure, then these other things don't have to be issues. We don't have to argue about if your foundation is built on Jesus Christ and you know who he is and you know that God the Father loves you so much, then you know that love, that agape love, is so powerful that I don't have to question, does God love me today? Did I fail God today? What's he going to do to me now? No, he's going to be working in our lives. All things are working together for good to those who love the Lord according to his purpose. I think it's a very comforting thing that even though I know I have to do my I wills and there are some times that I won't do what I should, but yet God still loves me. And does he want us to make those good choices? Absolutely. As parents, we want, what do we want our kids? I hope they make bad choices in life. No, we always say, yeah, I hope our kids, we pray that our kids make good choices. God wants us to make good choices. Sometimes we will, sometimes we won't. But the most important thing is the day that you made the most important choice. Because we're not talking about, okay, we have to separate salvation and sanctification here. Salvation is the day you called on Christ as your Lord and Savior, who died and rose again for your sins. Since, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him. I love John 3, 16. If I'm going to go debate someone, I just, I just they're going to bring a big Bible. I'm, I'm just taking John 3, 16 with me. Because I'll, I'll debate every, every theology with John 3, 16. Just take it to the cross. We'll leave it there. Okay? Because if God loves me, a lot of those things I'll understand more. If I understand that God loves me and that God is good, that I'll understand that I'm not going to feel destroyed when I mess up because God loves me. Is he really? Yeah, no, the Bible says God loves you. Okay? Make that choice for salvation that one time. And then as we live a sanctified life, there are going to be times when we're walking in the flesh. As a believer, in times we're walking in the Spirit. And for the times that we walk in the flesh, which sometimes are more than we would like, I call on God's grace and mercy. Right? Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. 
right? That is, or did save a wretch like me, but is still saving a wretch like me, right? So, yep, we're going to fail. God knew it. That's why, he, that's why he came to earth in the man, as a man 2,024 years ago. Uh, but even after we come to Christ, we're going to fail. And he knew that too. And his grace will carry us the rest of the way home. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you, Lord, uh, for tonight, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that um, there's a lot in this word, Lord, that we'll be studying for all eternity. And we might not know everything about it. But we, if we know your character... It really ends a lot of the debate, Lord. Uh, your omniscience, your omnipotence, your omnipresence, Lord. All-knowing, all good. If you're not a good God, if you're not, not that you do good things, but you are intrinsically good, you are the essence of what good is, then it really helps to find a lot of theologies. You are a good God. Yes, you're a just God, too. And I thank you that you gave me the freedom to say I will or I won't. Uh, otherwise, I'd be a robot, Lord, forced to bow down and worship you. But you want a true love. You want a love that says I will tell people about you, Lord, because I do love you. And the more I know you, the more I love you. And sometimes when I do fail you, you still love me. And that surely gives me a lot more comfort for the future, Lord. That my future isn't based on my, you know, how good of a Christian I've lived. It's based on how good you are, God. And you're a good, good Father. A good, good Father. And your goodness, as that song says, has been chasing me all my life. The goodness of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.